Good evening and welcome to Multilingual Migrant Worker News for this, the second week of April. I'm Linda Kwan. Our top story tonight covers the resolution to the Yasu Immigration Detention Center fire. Following the February 11th fire at the Yasu Migrant Detention Center, the government was criticized for insufficient handling of the situation. Compensation for families of the victims was decided upon, and each of the families received 100 to 200 million won. However, the family of the man who is suspected of starting the fire only received 50 million won. Each person who survived with injuries was given 10 million won with a provision allowing for three years of medical treatment and one year visa extension for a caregiver. On March 30th in Yasu, a funeral service was held. During the cremation service, emergency paramedics were on site assisting families of victims as some fell unconscious. In Seoul on April 1st, a gathering to observe the 49th day of mourning after the fire and a rally for the victims was held. The sponsoring committee stated that the essential solution to the Yasu case is to legalize undocumented migrant workers. <clears throat> and while the compensation problems have been concluded, it stated that further challenges were at stake. Surviving migrant workers were, who were confined confined during the fire were deported while the seven migrant workers at the Chengju Detention Center who had appealed their impending deportation were released on April 7th. On March 29th, the head of immigration, Myung Duk Kang, met with the Joint Committee for Migrant Workers in Korea president to discuss a resolution to the Yasu Detention Center fire. Kang stated that if an undocumented worker from any of the countries that have signed an international labor agreement with Korea voluntarily goes home, he will be allowed to legally return after a certain period of time. Presently, there are nine countries that have entered into such an agreement with Korea, which accounts for 70,000 workers, about 30 percent of the total number of migrant workers in Korea. An agreement is expected to be made with China in the near future, which would then extend to a total of 80 percent of all migrant workers. While an important step, there are concerns that if all migrant workers are not legalized, the problems facing migrant workers will not actually be solved. In addition, migrant workers that come to Korea under the employment permit system will continue to face the existing problems. This is the first time that positive concrete steps have been taken toward solving the problems with the migrant worker system in Korea. Built on the momentum created by the recent Yasu Detention Center fire, there is hope that this will create fundamental change in policy regarding migrant workers. In crime news, there has been an increase in fraudulent activities toward migrant workers by people pretending to be police or immigration personnel. On Tuesday, March 20th, at 7.30 p.m. in the Masak area of Nam Yangju City in Gyeonggi Province's industrial complex, a Korean man with a walkie-talkie entered the house of a Nepalese worker, Mr. Dahl. He stated that he was not there to arrest him, but that he was a policeman and requested to see identification. Mr. Dahl, an undocumented worker, felt uncomfortable but showed him his wallet and once the alleged policeman obtained information from Mr. Dahl's cash card, including the pin number, he left a fake name and contact number and left. Another victim in a similar, similar fraud case, a Bangladeshi worker, discovered that over 35 billion won had been withdrawn from his account after he had mistakenly given his information to someone posing as an authority. The suspect's profile has been traced through CCTV hidden cameras, but his whereabouts are still under investigation by police. We have some good news for you tonight. The Ministry of Justice stated that the four undocumented Mongolian workers who saved the lives of 11 men in a recent fire will be allowed to remain in the country legally. After their heroic act on March 17th at the fire in southwest Seoul, <clears throat> in light of this incident, the Ministry of Justice has decided to make special allowances to legalize undocumented migrants in special deserving cases such as this. This is the first such example of this new provision. The ninth annual Women's Film Festival in Seoul kicked off last Thursday, April 5th in Shincheon at the Artrian Movie Theater. Under this year's festival theme of Women Minorities Speaking Out, special categories include women migrants, youth, 
queer and women around the world affected by globalization and military. 100 films from a total of 29 different countries are being screened at the festival. A forum was also held at Tuesday afternoon at Iwa, Iwa Women's University entitled Asian Women's Migration in the Area of Globalization. Professors and human rights activists from Korea and the U.S., along with filmmakers from the Philippines and Lebanon, participated. The film festival runs through Thursday the 12th. Amnesty International Korea headquarters on the 29th announced that its Secretary General, Irene Khan, on the 27th expressed regret over the Korean government's inadequate resolution to the Yasu Migrant Detention Center fire, and in turn delivered an official announcement to President No over this issue. Amnesty International, in their announcement, stated that we cannot hide our grief over the March 11th Yasu Foreigner Detention Center fire, resulting in the death of 10 migrant workers and 17 injured. They continued on, saying doubts have been raised about the extent of training security guards received from the government if they weren't even able to rescue those being detained from the fire in time. Conditions for women immigrants in Gyeongbuk province have quickly deteriorated, according to a recent report. Out of the 2,417 international brides surveyed, the largest percentage of them, 757 women, are married to farmers. Another 18 percent were married to men without stable jobs. The vast majority of these women immigrants live in poor to middle class conditions. And in fact, 20 percent are earning only enough to cover basic living expenses. It is obvious that these women were not provided sufficient information about their prospective husband's financial situation before getting married. The Korean government must institute policies to protect people who immigrate to Korea for international marriage from faulty or insufficient information about their prospective spouses. Since last September, a prison facility for foreigners has been operating in Chunan. In order to provide better treatment for foreign national prisoners, the Ministry of Justice designated Chunan Juvenile Corrections Facility as the facility that will be responsible for foreign prisoners. 200 model behavior prisoners were selected to be moved to this prison. At this facility, inmates work at on-site and off-site workshops, and those commuting out of the prison to work can receive a special bonus. Also, inmates can receive instruction in Korean language and Korean culture through through the use of audiovisual materials. Prisoners at this facility are also able to receive regular phone calls and letters from their families. Currently, 686 foreign prisoners are in the Korean prison system. Amidst intense controversy, the Korea-U.S. Free Trade Agreement negotiations wrapped up on April 2nd. The agreement has now been turned over to be ratified by each country's respective National Assembly. Supporters of the FTA from the government's Grand National Party and Uri Party expect the agreement will help the Korean economy by increasing the competitiveness of Korea's exports and industry. Meanwhile, the Dem Democratic Labor Party, labor groups, farmers and citizens organizations are concerned that the further opening of Korea to American competition would lead to a deterioration of labor conditions, the collapse of the Korean agricultural industry as it stands and a further polarization of Korean society. Although automobile and textile industries stand to gain through export increases, other sectors are expecting to be hit hard by the agreement, including pharmaceuticals, entertainment, public welfare, intellectual property rights, and agriculture. The effect the FTA is expected to have on Korea depends largely on size and influence. Competitive large industries stand to benefit most, while small industries will suffer losses and the most vulnerable groups in society will feel the largest shock. Accordingly, the fact that conditions for migrant workers could become even more critical is a cause for concern. We have a couple of event announcements for you tonight. Labor Day is only a few weeks away and special events are in the works, including the 2007 Labor Day Marathon. Co-sponsored by the Korean Labor Commission and the Son Ki-jung Foundation, the marathon will be held on May 1st in Jamshil, Seoul. Both Korean and migrant workers, consisting of those from Myanmar, Mongolia, Vietnam, Thailand, and Sri Lanka, along with their families, will participate in the marathon along the Han River. The significant occasion symbolizes how Korean society is evolving in coexistence with migrant workers. And lastly, the Migrant Worker Television is about to celebrate its second anniversary. MWTV was founded on December 
2004 and hit the airwaves with its first broadcast of the world of migrant workers in April 2005. Now, two years later, MWTV is broadcasting its 24th episode of the world of migrant workers and the 41st digest of multilingual migrant worker news. We hope that you will continue to support MWTV in our efforts to bring you the perspectives of migrant workers live here in Korea. Our second anniversary event will be held Saturday, April 14th at 5 p.m. in the Yonsei University Student Union. We invite all of you to come and join us for the celebration. And that's all for this, the second week of April. You can watch rebroadcasts of our news on our website at www.mwtv.or.kr. Thanks for being with us. Good night.